Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, this is the third video of valuation of shares chapter and in the previous two videos, we have seen the concept of valuation of shares and we have solved a problem of valuation of shares with the net assets method or it is also known as intrinsic value method. We have seen the formula of this method, how this method works and we have solved a problem with this method and most importantly, we have seen how to calculate net assets available for equity shareholders okay that is most important in this method right so please watch this previous video before going ahead with this video okay i will put the link in the description below as well as i will put the link in the i button fine so now in this video what we are going to do is in this video we are going to solve this problem with the yield value method okay we are going to solve this problem with the yield value method so first we have to understand the formulas of this method and what are the different types that are available in this method okay what are the different variants okay there is only this one method okay there are just different variants under it okay we'll see that now so first let's discuss this method okay let's do that now first let's understand how does the yield value method works how does the company value their shares with the yield value method right so to do that first we need to know the meaning of yield what is the meaning of yield yield means future result yield means what yield means future result let's take an example for example if you sow the crops now yeah if you plant the crops now then what harvest will you get in future what harvest will you get in future that is the basic meaning of yield Let's take your example. If you study now, if you put your hours into studying, then what result will you get in future? How many marks will you get in future? That is the basic concept of yield. Fine. But here we are talking about company. Here we are talking about valuation of shares of a company. Right. So how does the company value their shares with the yield value method? See here what the company does is the company thinks about people what people will think before investing in their company the people before investing in their company they will think what profit will this company earn what dividend this company will issue what earning this company will have isn't it this is what you will think when you will invest in any company you will think about the future what this company will give to you right in return in return what you will get if you invest in this company if you put your hard-earned money in this company right that's what everyone thinks what return they will get so here this method is based on future here there is a future assumption here there is an assumption that company will go on for good amount of years in future and it will have good dividend okay it will issue good dividend it will have good profits and it will have good earning okay with the ratio of earning dividend and profit what it does is it calculates the value of share okay so we'll see all that we'll see the formulas but here you have to keep in mind that this method is based on future assumption the previous method right net asset method or intrinsic value method there was a liquidation assumption there was an assumption that company will be closing down the company will be liquidating but here there is no such assumption here there is a future assumption the company will go on for good amount of years in future and that is why the people will invest right in the company no one will invest in a liquidating company everyone will invest in a good going on company which will continue which will continue in future right so this is how yield value method works here the company value their shares on the basis of on the basis of future dividend on the basis of the dividend it will issue on the basis of the profit it will make and on the basis of the earning they will have in future okay there is a future assumption over here now let's see the formulas of this method and then directly we are going to solve this problem okay so let's see the formulas now now here we have three different types of yield value method or you can say three different variants of yield value method okay first we have rate of dividend rate of earning and then we have capitalization of profit now you will say from where does the capitalization of profit came into existence because in the concept video you showed us only rate of dividend and rate of earning you didn't tell us about capitalization of profit variant of yield value method you didn't tell us about this right see the thing is the thing is that yesterday i checked out some 
syllabuses of some universities right and i found out that i found out that in some universities they have capitalization of profit in their syllabus this variant of yield value method this variant of yield value method is coming in their exams okay so that is why i decided to include capitalization of profit method this variant in our video fine so now here we are going to discuss about capitalization of profit okay and rate of dividend and rate of earning see it's very simple okay don't overthink it it is very simple if you know the goodwill chapter and if you have seen capitalization of super profit or average profit then this is the same thing okay it's very simple and these two are exactly what is a carbon copy of each other these are exactly same okay rate of dividend and rate of earning only the name is different okay these are exactly same and this is also very simple we have already seen this in the goodwill chapter so these three variants are very simple so first let's see the formulas first we will start off with the rate of dividend and rate of earning and then we will see the capitalization of profit fine so let's see the formulas of rate of dividend and rate of earning now see here we have the formulas of these two variants rate of dividend variant and rate of earning variants of yield value method here what we do is here we calculate the value of share on the basis of the dividend that company will issue in future right and here here in rate of earning variant what we do is we calculate the value of share on the basis of the earning that company will have in future right so here are the formulas see the formulas are exactly same the only thing is the only thing is the names are different here a dividend is used and here earning is used that's all everything is same all the formulas are same see first the formula we have is the value of share formula yes value of share value of share under rate of dividend see first you take expected rate of dividend you take expected rate of dividend and then you divide it by normal rate of dividend simple you understood this ratio expected by normal see here expected rate of earning divided by normal rate of earning expected divided by normal it's very simple okay en expected and normal okay en here also en you have to keep like that in mind okay and then we have into paid up value of a share paid up value of a share here also the same thing paid up value of a share see how simple it is the formula is exactly same the only difference is dividend here earning that's all and normal rate of dividend will be given in the question paid up value of a share will be given in the question always normal rate of earning is also will be given in the question paid up value of a share also will be given in the question you just have to find expected rate of earning and expected rate of dividend right if you get a question on rate of dividend on the basis of rate of dividend then you have to find only expected rate of dividend it will never be given in the question okay how to calculate that see the formula is very simple for that also and this formula is also the exact same copy see profit available for equity shareholder okay profit available for equity shareholder divided by paid up equity share capital and these are rates okay these are percentages and this is the paid up value rupees 10 or rupees 100 how much is paid against the share and see here you are calculating the rate so that is why we have to multiply with 100 understood so profit available for equity shareholder this will be given in the question if it is not given then you can easily calculate okay take the average profit and then subtract the income tax and subtract the uh, if there is any profit transfer to reserve and then subtract preference shareholder dividend right then you will get profit available for equity shareholder we'll see that while solving the problem don't worry it's very simple profit available for equity shareholder divided by paid up equity share capital into 100 simple and for this also the same formula profit available for equity shareholder right divided by paid up equity share capital into 100 you get expected rate of earning right the only thing that you need to calculate is expected rate of dividend or expected rate of earning and then apply the formula expected divided by normal into paid up value of share and you will get the value of share that's it that's all you have to do these two variants are exactly same the only thing is the name dividend and earning that's all on the basis of question you will use the dividend or earning if the question talks about dividend then use the dividend name if the question doesn't talk about dividend then directly use the earning name that's all simple so this is the formula of these two variants okay rate of dividend and rate of earning very simple right they are exact copy of each other understood very simple now we'll solve the problem but before solving the problem let's just discuss the capitalization of profit also okay let's discuss capitalization of profit now here we have the third variant of yield value method that is capitalization of profit and this capitalization of profit is very simple we have seen this already in the goodwill chapter right capitalization of super profit and average profit yes here we 
capitalize the profit understood so what we need here we need capitalized value of profit and the number of equity shares to calculate the value of a share value of a share formula under capitalization of profit variant is capitalized value of profit we need capitalized profit divided by number of equity shares only equity shares because we are calculating the value of equity share right so number of equity shares but capitalized value of profit will never be given in the question it will not be given in the question you have to calculate the capitalized value of profit and it is very simple we have already seen that in the goodwill chapter right how we used to do the capitalization of super profit we used to take the super profit and then multiply it with 100 and divide it by nrr right we flipped the normal profit formula so that is what we have to do over here also to calculate the capitalized value of profit we are going to take profit available for equity shareholders only okay it will be given in the question profit available for equity shareholders and we are going to multiply it with 100 and divide by nrr normal rate of return simple profit available for equity shareholders into 100 by normal rate of return we will get capitalized value of profit we will use this here and calculate the value of a share simple right so this is the formula of capitalization of profit okay so this is how you calculate the value of a share under this variant fine easy right right now let's solve the problem and calculate the value of a share under yield value method now let's solve this problem see here is the question and you can clearly see that here I have chosen a problem with the horizontal balance sheet yeah and in the previous video in the net assets video I've told that we are going to stick with the vertical balance sheet and we are not going to see any questions with the horizontal balance sheet but yesterday I thought otherwise I thought let's just do one problem with the horizontal balance sheet because in some universities still they are sticking with this format and questions of valuation of shares are coming in the exams in horizontal balance sheet so it will be helpful for students if I do one question in the horizontal balance sheet yeah so we are going to solve this problem so first let's analyze this yeah let's analyze see here what they have given see on 31st 2019 the balance sheet of sadhana limited was as follows so here we have got a balance sheet of sadhana limited right liability side and asset side now if you see on the liability side first we have got share capital 5000 shares of rupees 100 each 5 lakh but here they haven't said anything about equity or preference right nothing is given since nothing is given so we are going to assume that these are equity shares 5000 equity shares of rupees 100 each 5 lakh okay and they also haven't said anything about paid up value nothing is given so we are going to assume that these are fully paid shares okay fully paid 5000 equity shares of rupees 100 each fully paid 5 lakh fine and then they have given us profit and loss account one lakh three thousand bank overdraft twenty thousand credit are seventy seven thousand provision for taxation forty five thousand proposed dividend seventy five thousand and then the asset side see land and building two lakh twenty thousand plan and machinery ninety five thousand stock three lakh fifty thousand debtors one lakh fifty five thousand right so this is the balance sheet and then they have set the five years net profit of the company after deducting the tax whereas under right they have given us the net profit of the last five years right 2015 85,000 2016 96,000 2017 90,000 2018 1 lakh 2019 95,000 yes these are the past profits and then they have given us see the normal rate of return is 10 percent they are saying normal rate of return is 10 percent and then they have said calculate the value of equity shares with the yield value method right now the big question is we know we have to calculate with yield value method but which variant to use which variant rate of dividend capitalization of profit rate of earning which variant see it's very simple have they said anything about capitalization have they said capitalization rate or anything no right if they did then you had to use capitalization of profit but since they haven't so you have to see whether they have said anything about dividend anything about rate of dividend have they said anything about rate of dividend no nothing right so you don't have to use this variant also this type also right so you are left with only one choice that is rate of earning right you come to know that you have to use this variant so immediately go to the formula of rate of earning and see what you need to calculate the value of share in this variant you need expected rate of earning yeah you need normal rate of earning and you need paid up value of share you need these three things right so in this question here there is no expected rate of earning is there no there isn't right 
here there is only normal rate of return and we need that yes normal rate of return normal rate of earning yes we have got normal rate of earning and paid up value of share see paid up value of share is here 100 yeah this is fully paid up share so 100 is the fully paid up value okay so we have got normal rate that is 10 percent and paid up value of share is 100 and then expected rate of earning we don't have expected rate of earning so we have to calculate the expected rate of earning so do we have profit available for equity shareholders do we have paid up equity share capital see check in the question see here we have paid up equity share capital the total amount that is five lakh so we have paid up equity share capital but do we have profit available for equity shareholder profit i'm talking about profit okay not the whole capital profit available for equity shareholders no we don't we only have net profit right so we will convert this net profit into profit available for equity shareholders okay we will solve this problem we will see well, you understood right how to analyze the problem yeah this is how you have to analyze it's very simple we have paid up equity share capital this hundred is simple then normal rate of earning we have normal rate of earning we have paid up value of share we have to just calculate expected rate of earning and then apply the formula and we'll get the value of share simple right yes now let's solve the problem now let's solve this problem see here first what are we going to do is as i said we are going to see the formula so to calculate the value of share we need expected rate of earning yeah but we don't have that so to calculate that we need profit available for equity shareholders we don't have that too but we can find that out see we have here in the question the net profit so we can use this past year profits to calculate profit available to equity shareholders first what are we going to do is first we are going to calculate the average profit of the past years okay calculation of average profit average profit formula is simple right you have seen that in the goodwill chapter total profit of the past years you will add all the past year profits 85,000 96,000 90,000 1 lakh 95,000 you are going to add up all of them see 85 96 90 1 lakh 95 add up all of them and divide by number of years 1 2 3 4 5 5 years right so divide by 5 you get 93,200 as the average profit see and then from this average profit if the question says if there is any income tax first first and foremost you have to subtract the income tax okay if the question says only okay but here they have said after deducting tax so there is no income tax okay if there is you have to subtract and then if they say if you have to transfer 20 percent of profit to general reserve then you have to do that too okay you have to subtract okay so profit available for equity shareholders to calculate this you have to take the average profit subtract tax subtract any transfer to reserve and subtract the preference dividend also why why preference dividend because the profit of the company right on profit of the company on the profit there is a right of equity shareholder as well as preference shareholders both of them are supposed to get the dividend right but here in this chapter we are calculating the value of equity shares right so we have to exclude the right of preference shares we have to take only we have to take only only the value of equity shares right so we have to take only the profit of equity shares so profit available for equity shareholders is equal to average profit yeah average profit which we just calculated yes average profit minus tax if there is any then whatever is left from that you have to subtract the reserve transfer and from that you have to subtract preference dividend fine okay but here in this question there is nothing but still i told you that okay so there is nothing nil so 93200 will be the profit available for equity shareholders simple we got the profit available for equity shareholders so then we can easily apply the formula and calculate the expected rate of earning yeah profit available for equity shareholders divided by paid up equity share capital see profit available for equity shareholders divided by paid up equity share capital into 100 we are calculating the rate so that is why we have to multiply it with 100 okay keep that in mind so 93200 is the profit available for equity shareholder yeah we take that over here divided by the paid up equity share capital so this is the paid up equity share capital yeah share capital in the balance sheet see 5 lakh so we take that 5 lakh fine we take that 5 lakh and we multiply it by 100 to calculate the rate so 18.64 is the rate we get after applying this formula simple right it's very simple profit available for equity shareholders divided by paid up equity share capital into 100 we get 18.64 as the expected rate of earning expected now we have got everything normal rate of earning is given in the question as 10 percent and then expected rate of earning which we just calculated that is 
18.64 yeah and then paid up value of share we know paid up value of share is 100 yeah yes so directly apply the formula expected rate of earning divided by normal rate of earning into paid up value of share see 18.64 is the is the rate of expected earnings okay expected rate of earning divided by normal normal is given in the question that is 10 percent so we took 10 percent into paid up value of a share paid up value of share is 100 paid up value of a share is 100 so we take that 100 you multiply with 100 fine so we get 186.4 per share is the value of the one equity share understood so this is how you calculate understood first you have to see what is given see properly the formula what is given normal rate of earning will always be given paid up value of share will always be given these two you just have to calculate expected rate of earning and you have to see right profit available for equity shareholders also needs to be calculated sometime okay so profit available for equity shareholder divided by paid up equity share capital and here this is value this is the whole amount okay keep that in mind don't confuse